You're listening to the award-winning That Gets My Goat. Won the award for the worst show ever. My all-time favorite commercial, I think it was Budweiser, it might have been Miller, it might have been Coors. It was a beer commercial, but it was the Wingman commercial. Your friend is rocking the dance floor. <laughs> or, or you're rocking the dance floor with like this hot chick. But she's doing an anchor. A juju investment banker. Who's talking about herself and not much more. Whoa. So buy her a beer that's raising your heel. Money wing man. You take it one for the team. So your buddy can live the dream. You know what I'm talking about? So your friend can live the dream. I, if I had a cell phone that could actually play a ringtone, that would be my that ringtone. That would be your ringtone. I love that commercial so much. I want to hug the guy who wrote that song. <laughs> I want to hug the attractive girl. And I'll, heck, I'll hug the girl that was pl- the, the, the nasty best friend that was the junior investment banker. That's how much I love that commercial. <laughs> Did you like the ones where... They had the thank you for inventing th- this thing. You would hear them on the Mr. radio. Mr. Giant a lot Foam too. Finger yeah. Maker. Was Giant Foam my... Finger Maker. That was my favorite of those. We salute you. <laughs> and that was Budweiser, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's hard to say which one's my favorite. There was a time when I called this one the Citizen Kane of commercials. Okay. And it's the, I think it was the original. The very first commercial for the Carl's Jr. $6 burger where the two guys are sitting there in the restaurant and they're trying to eat their hamburger. And in the background, there's the people going, happy, happy birthday, (laughs) happy, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday to the table next to them. And they're just like, and they're looking over and there's the group of waiters and they show them all standing there and singing. The the reason I call it the Citizen Kane of commercials is because each waiter had like a totally separate, they weren't just like regular people each one had a character you know there was the chick that was like the weird chick and she would wave her hands for happy happy birthday and waving her hands in front of her face and then there was like the the one dude who was like the indian guy and he was just like happy happy and he totally didn't care and he wasn't putting anything into it and then there's like the the one fat girl who's like happy birthday and getting like way into it and every single one of them had a different character to it and, and the slug line the slug was, line was you want to get a, a restaurant, restaurant style, style hamburger without, without the, the restaurant. restaurant there was several of those that were good but that one was the one that i thought was really good well we used to talk about something that we missed from california were those jack-in-the-box commercials yes. with the the with jack, jack. Those they were really were, funny. They put work into them. They made them memorable. They didn't last forever. I don't know. We don't live in an era of playing the same thing. Dude, ancient Chinese secret, huh? Probably played for 20 years. Right. You know, some yeah, of those commercials those. and the Mikey commercial, all, it had to have been 20 years. Right. Because that sucker started before you and I were even born. And by the time we were like in high school, they were still playing it. Yeah, that's, that's the thing that you used to get is commercials that would play for a long time. And that doesn't happen. You're lucky if you get them for a year. And I don't know. That was one that I really liked. Uh, another milk commercial that I was going to mention, there was one. And this got to be from really early on in the time. But there's this guy and I think he dies at the start of it. And then he wakes up and he goes and there's a fridge and he opens the fridge up and there's something. Shit in the, loads of cookies. Yeah, that's what it is. There's like cookies he's, or something and he's wait, chowing but, but down But first you got to set the scene of what, what everything looks like first. Because remember it was a, a trick on us. Because uh-huh. everything is white and fluffy and there's feathers. And Remember? Yeah. And he's just like, oh, I'm in heaven. And there's all the cookies and he's eating. The, oh, his heaven's so wonderful. And then he's like... And, and he grabs and the like, milk carton. And the milk carton is empty. And he's like, wait, where am I? And it says, got milk in flames <laughs> at the end of the commercial. Those were some really good commercials. And I wonder if in the ad world, those people are celebrities. The people that came up with this or the people that wrote that commercial. Obviously, because they have awards, right? Don't you get the, what are the commercial awards? Cleo's? I have no idea, sir. I'm sorry. But every year they have like the 10 best or the funniest commercial or the whatever it is commercials and all that. And people go up and they give their speeches and they get, I mean, it's like a used prophylactic or something like that, but it, but they get some kind of statue. Okay. Maybe that, not that, maybe it's slightly better than that. 
but that you wouldn't want to maybe you would i mean maybe those guys are all soulless because that's that's the deal with movie executives is you know the creative people by the time they get to that point of being an executive where they're in charge of everything like that their souls are gone and they no longer give a crap about any of the art or the the beauty or any of that stuff i mean like even uh-huh. harvey weinstein who's like the last of the the moguls, you know, and then and, and all that, you know, the last creative executive or whatever. I mean, it's just it's all about the awards and how can we buy the Oscars again this year and, and all that stuff with him. Maybe that's how the ad world is, too. You know, it's like, well, yeah, that guy made one point eight million dollars from that 15 second ad. I want to be him, not the guy who wrote the happy, happy birthday commercial that everybody <laughs> loves. Yeah, you know the commercials that I absolutely despise right now. And I don't know, I, I, I'm assuming that these don't play everywhere. Obviously, the people in London that listen aren't going to be seeing the commercials that we see. But there's these commercials for CenturyLink, I believe it is. And, you know, these have always been bad. They started out with this thing about how you could get your high-speed internet for nineteen ninety-five a month. And it wasn't going to change, right? And they had this steel plated 1995 and they had like bombers dropping bombs on it and ninjas cutting it with swords and it it lived through it so it's never going to change and and that was lame to begin with i don't know it was like super poorly done it was all cg first of all it had some dude and you know he was just standing in front of a green screen talking and then the jets would come by and they'd drop the bombs and the bombs didn't even actually hit The 1995, they were like blowing up behind it. And then he's like, yeah, is that all you got? Look, 1995, still there, you suck. (laughs) But then they moved on to these even worse commercials where they have people in a town hall meeting. And there's some guy and he's like, yeah, CenturyLink, it's only 1995. And it stays that way for five years, and we promise. And then the people in the town hall meeting go, whoa, whoa, it stays that way? And he's like, yeah, cable can't offer that. And then you see a guy <laughs> in the audience. Now, if, if he runs his fingernails down the chalkboard and says, I'll catch your cable link. Oh, wait, I'll find it for 1995, but I'll catch it and install it for 20. I wish it was that good. No, there's just a guy in the audience. He's wearing a hat that says cable on it. And he scrunches down in his seat and pulls his hat down over his eyes as though he's hiding with his hat that says cable on it. So already it's terrible. And then this old like Wilford Brimley kind of guy stands up and he goes, 19 to 95 a month? Well, I like that. And everybody goes, oh. Like, this meant something that this stupid old guy said. I don't know. They're terrible. I'd say I'm not, I'm not getting it. What, yes. Was he like the Mikey of the commercial and he know. couldn't be pleased? And they're saying that even Wilfred Brimley <laughs> with his diabetes is pleased? I don't know what they're saying. It's the worst commercials ever and they play endlessly. They're awful. Make them stop. Well, I wish that I could, but I don't have what it takes to rise up and be in a position of influence. You know what I mean? I, I don't. I, I didn't know until just now how passionate I was about commercials. Maybe I should have gone into that. But I feel that all the time. Every time I hear one of these terrible commercials, and they're almost always local. But yeah. hey, I live local, and I know that that's obvious. But what? you know, in the area that I am, I could be writing these commercials. Good God, they suck. Yes. It, it just it, it, it makes me wish that I were over there to just push them down and say, I'm going to do this job. And yeah, there's certain places, certain plumbing companies that I will never employ because their commercials are so bad that I will avoid them just for that fact. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go to the other one because you guys suck. You've done nothing but cause loathing for your company by playing your commercials terrible commercials poorly produced commercials and see that los angelino jagoff would tell you no our work is already done it doesn't matter if you like it or you hate it sister as long as it got your attention you remember the name of the product we win the the, the terrorists win F- you and so but, <laughs> so but there's los gotta, angelino guy is uh why is he christopher walken <laughs> why does everybody say every voice i do is christopher walken <laughs> somebody said that my william shatner sounded like christopher walken oh, yeah. the other day we win remember what i said about the scorching kids see to me that sounds like christopher walken but what voice i was doing was not 
<laughs> okay, there's there's something to be said for if you know the name of the product, their job is done, whether you like or hate the commercial. But if you like the commercial enough to look favorably upon the product, that's got to be way better. You know what I mean? You know, like Wendy's business went through the roof because of the Where's the Beef campaign. Because people responded to that and they liked the I, I, fudge. I know her name. Clara Peller was the where the beef woman long dead <laughs> in hell. ¿Dónde está la carne? I'll do the German one. Wo ist das Fleisch? <laughs> ¿Dónde está la pinche carne? <laughs> um, it, sorry, it was Burger King and McDonald's were the big two. And then after that, like circa 1986 or whatever, suddenly Wendy's, was, it was the big three. You know what I mean? That's how big a deal that was for Wendy's. And then the Taco Bell dog came along and it was the big four. Now, see, the Taco <laughs> Bell dog, I I didn't get why, why that. Do you remember the Quiznos creatures, the the, the demon? The, oh. That was very short-lived oh. and it was like around 2003, 2004. Despise those and commercials. It, and it was, we like the subs or whatever. They, these These... A crack had opened in hell itself, <laughs> and something had escaped, but it was so alien we couldn't put a name on what it was. But people that were really, really, really high, they knew what they were. And it was these terrible, terrible, awful, like, puppet CG things, and they would sing in a high-pitched voice or whatever. A screechy, annoying high-pitched voice and sing poorly. But these things did so much damage to Quiznos' business that they stopped the commercials or whatever. And, and yeah, they were up there. The, you know, it's like Subway and then Quiznos and then, you know, these other guys. And that it hurt their business. It, it, it stained their business in the same way that New Coke hurt Coke for so long. So there you go. You don't want to offend or repulse your viewers, but I guess just boring your viewers is not frowned upon. Yeah. Annoying your viewers is not frowned upon. The original Taco Bell Chihuahua commercial was actually a good commercial. Okay, tell me what it was. it started from. There was these two guys, and they had Taco Bell or whatever, and they were in their car, and they were driving along, and they had like music playing, and they had a bobblehead Chihuahua in like the back of the car it was like in the rear end of it you know where the back window like you know you have your back seat and then you have that little space between the seat and the window coming down and the bobblehead chihuahua is there and its head you see its head and they're driving along and its head is just kind of bouncing and stuff like that were their heads also bouncing yeah i think the guys were all you know they're all riding along nodding to the music or whatever and then all of a sudden shows a shot of the guys and shows chihuahua in the rearview mirror etc it's going through the shots and then all of a sudden you realize that the bobblehead chihuahua has been replaced by this real chihuahua and he's sitting there and his head is nodding and the guys like realize that it's a real chihuahua and they look back there and the chihuahua is there and he goes yo quiero taco bell <laughs> so he's like come in and then as they're driving away you see the uh now murdered chihuahua <laughs> bobblehead chihuahua has been you know thrown out the window and replaced by this dog who is after the taco bell i always thought that was kind of funny but yeah they just kept going and going and going with it which was see i don't remember there ever being an attempt to be funny on those it would just be like here's what we've got at taco bell this month yo quiero taco bell yeah and that was the end of the commercial that kind of became what they turned out to be but um yeah it's just one of those things sometimes that happens where you have a commercial and it like hits it big and so then all of a sudden this is it's, it's like that where's the beef commercial you know where's the beef it hit it big and then all of a sudden you had a string of commercials that went along with that whole thing but they got less amusing less and they creative. always get less amusing and less creative like, like the saturday night live sketches yeah and the taco bell one was the same kind of thing all of a sudden the taco bell dog is like the taco bell spokesman until sales plummet enough that they're like all right it's time to get something else and so they come up with a new ad campaign, like the wildly successful, I'm loving it. That was actually McDonald's, but uh, mm. wildly successful as far as I can tell, because that's so good. What a slogan. Eat it. <laughs> there was a commercial a couple of years ago. It was a cell phone commercial. It just had images of different people that were using this phone. That was one of the, maybe it was the first phone that had, you know, the screen and you could 
do anything you wanted to on it. But it had this song playing over it and a voiceover that said all the different uses for the cell phone. It's like when you're feeling blue or when you're on top of the world or when you're, you know, this or when you got the job or when you want to take your life or when you got. And the first time I saw that commercial, I just like froze and I watched the commercial and it was over and it was like seeing Pulp Fiction for the first time or it was like seeing the T-1000 <laughs> for the first time. I, I realized I was seeing something I had not seen before. They're going to have to change the history books after this moment. And the next day or two days later, I was at my friend Jeff's house and we were watching something and that commercial came on again. And... I, I, he's just a really cynical, hateful son of a bitch. <clears throat> and I knew he was going to make some crass comment about the commercial. And at the end, he goes, God. And I was like, oh, please, Jeff, don't insult. The, this is maybe the best commercial of the last 10 years. And he he was crying. <laughs> That's how awesome that commercial was. And I wish that I knew what the product was. Not that we have people that would go out and buy that. But do you know what I'm talk- um, commercial I'm talking I'm about? I'm not what? sure if I know which commercial you're talking about, I'm afraid. It wasn't just, you know, like everybody that uses this phone is happy and great. And it's just like everybody that uses this phone is a person. Mm-hmm. And everybody has their ups and their downs and they're bored and they're, 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 they're you know, sleepy and they're horny and all these things. And it was just like in 30 seconds... This is life. Jeez, it was a good commercial. <laughs> and I never bought a cell phone or whatever. But it, I, if, if maybe if I had more money or something like that, that's the thing. I would have go, gone Donate out. to the show, folks. I would go to that. No, 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 no. Phone. I'm not asking for money on that. <laughs> but it's just like if, if I could do that sort of thing where it's just like, oh, I like that commercial. I'm going to support their product. Right. You go in there and it'll be the opposite of the mattress place. Where I said, I said, you know, I saw this commercial and I'm going to buy one of the phones. And he's like, you're the third person today and, and you're the second pussy that's crying when he was telling me that. <laughs> it would just be, and yeah, I, I, there's no point in me trying to look it up or whatever because I don't know how to describe yeah. that commercial. If you could give me something from it, then we could probably find it in an instant. But uh, since but somebody here, somewhere knows what I'm talking about. I'm sure they do. I, I mean, They're if, not listening to the show. They're not listening to the show, but I'm saying if know. the number of people that listen to the Dune <laughs> Steve proper listen to that gets my goat, Maybe in the forum, somebody say, oh, here's a link it to that commercial. commercial, right? which is cool. Go ahead and do it. But it's just, I, I don't know. And I know that, that we've talked a lot, but that's what we do. It doesn't cost any more to talk for an hour Interestingly, than it does for 20 minutes. Except but, for in the time lost from your life. No big loss. What else would I do, been right? wasting anyways, so there's no loss. You know what commercial is uh, interesting? We were talking about the Quiznos guys and how damaging it was to the business now this is like a different example in which it was a really polarizing thing i loved the commercials and i know other people didn't like them whatsoever but there was the breakfast with the king commercial or was it breakfast oh. with, or just whatever with the king and they had that really creepy, creepy. <laughs> burger king guy with the giant head and he would just be like and it was purposefully creepy too he'd come into your freaking bedroom and just be like standing there over your bed when you wake up <laughs> and you'd hear the like the shining music or something like that there's a guy at a urinal and he looks over and the king is there and he's looking down <laughs> It's just like the creepiest dude ever. I loved it. I thought it was so funny. Just all the, the ways they would make it just like all creepy and weird like that. And he'd just be like, just sitting there. But uh, yeah, I know a lot of people disliked it because of that same reason. And uh, I don't know if it helped or hindered their business. He didn't last all that long, but unfortunately. Nothing does but anymore. Yeah, nothing does. Like the, what's her name? Flo? The What's oh, product? yeah, the progressive insurance. The progressive chick? insurance woman has lasted for so long. And you know what? My hatred for her has waned a little yeah? bit. I still hate her. And I would still swerve in her direction if she were on the <laughs> side of the road. <laughs> but, oh, I used to just get furious when I'd see her on the commercial. She's she's kind of replaced that pink-haired insurance girl Now, that insurance cartoon. chick was... <laughs> <laughs> She's just gone. You don't see those insurance commercials anymore. Do they have other insurance commercials or is it just insurance gone? I don't know. You and I had a friend that we went to school with who was a spokesman for one of those cable companies. Oh, that's right. And they had these commercials for 
I don't know, two months, three months or whatever. And there were even radio commercials. And I would hear his voice. I think I heard them before I saw them. And I was just like, is that Brian? Yeah, it was Holy cow. Crazy. And then I turned it on. I was like, oh, my gosh. It's this guy that we went to school with that I, that I, I knew fairly well. Yeah, I would see him endlessly because in oh, a TV station, we have monitors everywhere on all, all the different channels. And I swear, I, I, it, there was like not one commercial break that would go by without seeing Brian, really. And... I'd say that it lasted three months, and that might be an exaggeration. But then his that cable company was bought out by another cable Century company. CenturyLink, I believe was it, it was. <laughs> and he was out. He was done. And I just I hope that he invested his money wisely because right. you would have been. I mean, to have na- a national chain of not only TV but radio ads, but that are played constantly on all these channels. See, because you get a check every time your commercial airs in any market. Now, granted, it's a small check, but think about all yeah, the channels all and, and all that stuff. That's just an unbelievable. That's sending your kids to college. You could is buy what a that house. Is. And you could. You could buy a house with that money. And I hope that he did. He was a nice guy. He was. I liked uh, him a lot. Really talented guy. And he, the, oh, the chicks dug him. But I guess that goes without saying. They dug everyone else. Um, <laughs> yeah, you think that about anyone but yourself. I, I really. do. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, okay, well, I. I'm the only leper in a burn unit. <laughs> so everywhere I go, oh, all of you guys are better off than I am. Can you hand me my finger, please? <laughs> all right. So we've talked for like an hour and I don't know, endlessly about this. It was supposed to be a shorty. It was, but I don't we moved care. on to the real one, but we talked a long time instead. And so this one will be a regular size episode of That Gets My Goat instead of a quickie. Now let's turn it into two. We could do that. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for uh, listening to us start on one subject and meander way off course into a completely different subject. And uh, we'll be back again next time with another That Gets My Goat. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. We got the subs. Wait, how did it? We got the... Was it... We got the subs! <laughs> they are dusty. I don't remember. Oh, gosh. They were... See ya. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. You've got to be kidding me. Uh, you know, we've been going for a while. We're probably going to have to cut this one in half, I no, think. No, but I wanted to ask you what your favorite commercials were. Okay, well, we'll do that in the next episode. Oh, like, like a tease, like a to be like Ooh, coming up next. There you go. After these words yes. from... Will be a very special episode of a Blossom. Blossom. Thanks for listening. I'm Big Anklovich. I'm Big Anklovich too. No, you're not. Stop that. Please, sir. I just I just wanna <laughs> I want the chicks just for a little while.